arrived. You'll find a beautiful selection of spring and summer fashions just waiting for you. And the selection of jewelry is the best ever. They'll be sanitizing and practicing social distancing for your safety and theirs. Visit the Joshua Tree Boutique on the Court Square downtown Princeton. And be sure to follow them on Facebook. Healthy vision can help keep you safe each day. It's important to take care of your eyes when you have diabetes. Did you know that diabetes can harm your eyes? The good news is that you can take steps to help keep your eyes healthy. Some simple tips to keep your eyes healthy include getting a dilated eye exam at least once a year. Visit your eye doctor right away if you see little black lines or spots that don't go away, any red spots, red fog, have a sudden change in how clearly you see, take longer than usual to adjust to darkness or have diabetes. Eye diseases are common among people with diabetes including retinopathy, cataracts, glaucoma. Some of the diseases have no symptoms and can cause vision loss or blindness if not treated. Have a checklist to keep your eyes healthy including keep track of and tell your eye doctor about changes in how you see. Talk with your eye doctor about the best way to keep your eyes healthy and keep your blood sugar at a healthy level. If you haven't had an exam in a while, schedule one now. Take care of your eyes and make them last a lifetime. This information provided by Penrod District Health. Your local McDonald's wants you to know that they're ready to serve you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They've always had their drive through and now they're offering curbside pickup service as well. To avoid the wait in the drive through you can download the McDonald's app and try curbside pickup. They appreciate your patience and understanding during this time. We are all having to adjust to this new way of life. It's temporary, but in the meantime, enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner at your local McDonald's. As we continue to battle COVID-19, we would like to stop and say thank you to all the frontline workers, from nurses and healthcare providers, teachers, grocery store workers, military, and beyond. Each of you have played a huge role in this fight, and we want to salute you. Go to WPKYonline.com and upload a picture of your fearless frontline worker today so they can feel the love and support they truly deserve. Frontline salutes have been brought to you by Main Street Pharmacy, Gracious Me, and Hancock's Neighborhood Market. It's time for your SportsEdge.com sideline report with Todd Griffin. Talking sports and more here on 1580, 103.3 WPKY and worldwide at WPKYonline.com. Here's your host, Todd Griffin. Good morning, everyone. The sideline report is on the air from 1035 West Main Street in Princeton. This is Todd Griffin of WPKY Radio and your SportsEdge.com. Got a busy show today. A little bit later on, Caldwell County Youth Incorporated President Dwight Meeks will be talking to us. And uh, looks like we're going to actually have some baseball, softball, and t-ball at the ballpark this summer. So that's great. But we're going to start this morning with Emma Talley, who joins us on the phone and... Uh, Emma, how are, how are you filling the void with uh, no sports going on right now? Yeah, it's a little crazy. Um, it's the first time since I've started playing golf. This is the longest that I've had off a competition. But, um, you know, I'm just kind of taking it easy. Uh, I go back and forth from Nashville to my home in, my parents' home in Kentucky. And, yeah, just making the best of each day and working out and uh, I bought a house two years ago in Nashville, and I haven't furnished it. So I'm furnishing the house and just kind of being patient and waiting to see what happens with the season. So it sounds like you've got plenty of things to keep you busy, even though there's there's no golf to be played right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, just staying busy, and I'm training for a half marathon, which has been fun and hard because I'm definitely not a runner. So training for that and working out, and like I said, just hanging around the house and making the best of each day. How did you get involved with the marathon thing? It's always been on my bucket list, and my oldest brother used to run in them, and I thought it was always a cool cool thing. And um, because gyms are closed and stuff, it's just kind of given me a, something to do and challenge myself and, uh, and keep me in shape. So it's been good. Uh, the LPGA Tour, uh, last I heard, is scheduled to resume now July 23rd and through the 26th. And, uh, well, up near Toledo, uh, how are you kind of getting ready for play to resume on the tour? Yeah, we that's not for sure yet. Um, hopefully we do play then, but it could be later depending on, unfortunately, it's a great thing when everything's going well that our tour is such a global tour. But um, 
we have some tournaments in Europe and Asia, so they're, we're kind of waiting to see what happens with those. And um, But when the season does start, I'll be ready. I'm really excited. I had a rough year last year. Try to gain distance at the beginning of the year, but really excited for this year. Um, with this time off, I've just been trying to uh, – really get my swing and and groove and get it perfect so that when the season does start I'll be ready to go yeah what are you hearing as far as trying to get the season going because it seems like they have pushed back a potential start date several times now yeah I mean as you can tell with this COVID I mean things are changing every single day so we just have to trust the LPGA and what they're going to decide um it's hard to make decisions a few months out with this COVID because things change so fast. So we're just kind of being patient and waiting it out. And uh, We'll know probably a month or so out of, of a for sure date. So right now we still aren't sure, but like I said, just practicing um, a bit every day and staying in, staying, getting my game ready and up to par for when it does start. Yeah. We're all kind of stuck with the coronavirus. Uh, a situation right now and, and I think the unknown is the thing that gets all of us but uh, I saw a story last night that said uh, the LPGA is going to freeze player statuses for this season so uh, what can you tell us about that and does that mean that you automatically retain your tour card for next season? Yep that is exactly what it means um, which is great it's going to be a different year obviously but I'll play in everything I can get in and next year no matter what happens I'll have my card. Yeah, does that kind of take some of the pressure off to perform the rest of this season? Um, I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I obviously am going to be going in with the same mindset as I always have been. I want to win the tournament, especially now that I feel like I have my game back. Um, last year, yes, it, it would have taken a lot of pressure off. But right now, um, I feel really confident in my game and just excited to see where what happens next and um when it when we do start playing i'll be ready to go well you said you struggled a little bit last season but uh, that's always relative because you're such a good golfer anyway but what what do you kind of need to improve on to go after some of those tournament titles um you know like i said i i just lost my swing last year so that was really the only part of my game that was really off so now that i've fixed that i'm just trying to um improve it every day and really ingrain those habits and not go back to the old swing that I had last year, just really perfect what I'm trying to work on. So I've been on the range quite a bit. It feels like I'm 10, 10 years old again, how much, how many balls I've been hitting, but I'm just trying to ingrain that swing and get ready. And so I'll be ready for, for the season. Yeah. When you're playing in these tournaments though, with uh, the top players in the world, what is the difference week to week between the players that finish toward the top um it's all a putting game i mean we can all hit if if you're hitting the ball well um we all can get on the green and get pretty close but it's all about putting i mean and just the timing of everything i think once you've done it once i know one of my friends hannah green she did it she won one tournament and now she's been playing well ever since so it's a lot of confidence too so you know, you just got to fin- have a couple of good finishes and then you get on a roll. It's all about rhythm and confidence. So, um, yeah, you just have to got to keep trucking, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned uh, the COVID-19 thing earlier. And uh, when you guys get back going, what are some of the concerns you might have uh, from tournament to tournament as you try to continue the LPGA season? Yeah, that's a great question because um, – a lot of people just see what, ha- what is happening on the PGA and like they're going to be flying private for the most part. And uh, we just don't have that kind of money on the LPGA. So um, my biggest concern is going to be just traveling every week on tour. That's going to be really hard. Um, but, you know, if I, I feel like the LPGA won't put us out there if we, if it's unsafe. So uh, I think we'll start when it's, when it's somewhat safe and, um, do the best we can do. I know that they'll be testing us some, and so we'll just have to see what happens. But right now, like I said, there's not much information just because they don't really know much right now. It's just kind of a waiting game. Well, and you mentioned the travel, and I'm I'm guessing that's something that maybe the average person doesn't think of as much, but uh, you do a ton of traveling, and and not just for tournaments, but for other things golf-related too. Yeah, for sure. I, I travel a lot. I mean, Last year, I probably 
traveled out of 52 weeks, maybe, maybe 32. Um, so quite a bit of traveling, maybe even more than that. So yeah, it's a great way to see the world. That's for sure. Especially with our tour being so global and it's been really fun. And that's probably one of the, it's the hardest part, but it's also the best part of being on, being on tour because I love to travel and see the world in different cultures, but um, it does get hard being in a suitcase all the time. Yeah, I was going to say that that has to take a toll on your game. Even though it's fun to make all those trips, at some point you still have to play golf. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's one thing that I've had to learn the last couple of years is just to really take each week um, and listen to your body and your mind. There's some weeks you, you just need to, you need a break, and there's other weeks where you really just need to grind. So... I think um, that's definitely something I learned last year because my rookie year, I took every single Monday off and didn't really think about it. And then last year, I played every Monday. And I was really tired by the end of the year versus my rookie year where I played actually more tournaments. So I've definitely learned a lot. Um, it's been a learning experience, and I'm, I'm thankful that I get to play golf for a living and just keep learning every single week. We're talking this morning with LPGA Tour professional and former Caldwell County standout Emma Talley. And Emma, we mentioned uh, the coronavirus earlier. Uh, I saw a story last night that said uh, there are some new safety protocols going into effect this year on the tour. And uh, one of those means you can, I guess, carry your own bag now. I, I don't know if that's something you'd want to do, but uh, what are some of the other things that uh, they may be looking at? And, you know, even here, uh, we don't take the pin out when we putt, and uh, uh, there are no rakes in the bunker anymore, so it, it's a little bit of a different game in the COVID-19 era. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a different year for sure. Um, and I think the closer to the tournament, the more they'll know. Um, things, like I said, things can change really fast, but... Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say. It's going to be a lot different. I mean, we're going to be tested probably in, in some way, form or fashion. And uh, I'll definitely probably be wearing a mask. So it's definitely going to be different. Probably probably not much uh, hospitality and stuff like that. So it's going to be a different year. But, you know, it's kind of like going back to your old junior golf days where everything was pretty simple, which um, I, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> well, well, I was going to ask, that's kind of going back to your younger golf days because uh, back then you had to tote your own golf bags around. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I definitely won't be toting my bag. I'm going to have my caddy out there. Um, but, yeah, it, it will it will be a bit different, and it'll be interesting to see what players do that and what players don't. How much does the uh, LPGA Tour communicate with you and uh, kind of keep you updated on how things are going? Yeah, they've done a pretty good job. I mean, we t we had a meeting yesterday, and um, the commissioner gave us a lot of good information. But, I mean, a lot of it's just so unknown because everything's changing from day to day. And like I said, our tours are global tours. So we just have to put our faith in him and um, be patient because, really, everything's still unknown. And I think things could even change for everyone, you know, considering if this gets better or worse in the fall. So... Um, it's just going to be a hard year on everyone, and I'm um, just trying to stay mentally prepared but also relaxed um, because I'm not going to get this chance to just hang out with my family probably ever again. I mean, I've been with my parents so much, and I'm just enjoying the time with them. Yeah, hanging out in Princeton is not, not really a bad thing, is it? Exactly. Like, it's the simple life, and it's been really good. As most people know in Princeton, uh, we live on the course, and... You know, in the mornings, I pull my mat out of the garage on the porch, and I hit balls into the 16th fairway to practice my swing. And then, I mean, I've seen you a lot out there. Uh, usually in the afternoon, I start, I usually play some holes. So I'm still practicing a few hours a day. I'm not really, I wouldn't say I'm grinding right now because uh, it's hard to practice eight hours a day every single day. Um, so I'm just trying to keep it easy until we have a for sure date. And then I'll start really, really practicing hard. Well, I hope if you see me practicing out there or playing out there, you don't look at my swing because I, I don't think it would help you any. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you are all good. I'm excited. It's, it's fun to see everyone that I know out there, too. So it's been fun. Uh, we talked about uh, the LPGA schedule. It's undergone a ton of revisions this year. And, again, not completely sure when you're going to get to start yet. But uh, how do you even go about trying to make a schedule for the rest of the year? Because it, it seems like tournaments just keep getting added to the end of the year, and it seems like you're going to be playing a whole lot deeper into the year than maybe you usually do. 
Yeah, I'm not really worried about it. I mean, golf is my job. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just staying patient. And I realize that this is probably only going to happen once. And as much as I wish I could write down exactly what's going to happen this year, none of us know what's going to happen each day. So I'm just staying patient. And um, like I said, just enjoying every day. I know for some people it's been really hard and stressful. Some people... Um, you know, people have lost, around the country, people have lost family members because of this. And thankfully, everyone um, in my family is healthy and safe. So I'm just trying to count my blessings and um, not not be too upset about the golf because in, re- in reality, it's not, it's not everything. It is my job, but we'll be back before you know it. Yeah, and you've had a lot of success uh, throughout your career. Uh, when you go back over your career from the younger days to now, uh, Talk a little bit about the step up in competition at each level and, and how you had to adjust to that. That's that's very a very good point, and most people don't realize that. Um, when I was younger, I mean, I started out in Kentucky winning everything, and then you go to a national level, and I won a lot still, but all those girls were the same age as me. And then you go to college, and it's a whole new world because you've got girls from all over the world in a four-year, you know, four-year age group. And the competition was a lot harder in college, but I still was winning and playing really well. And then and then you get on Symmetra, and honestly, Symmetra does not get enough credit because that was really hard. And um, anyone that goes through Symmetra and gets their card, I mean, it's brutal because you're traveling every single week and driving from from tournament to tournament playing with really good players. And, I mean, you probably have a 10-age um, grouping there, and it's hard. I mean, it's really hard. And I'm, when I look back on it, I'm I'm even more proud of myself just because I got through it because it's, it is really hard. And only 10 people get their cards out of about 170. So it's tough out there. And then when you get to the LPGA, it's just a learning game. I mean, those first few years, and as many people have told me, it's just you got to learn how to do it. And I'm still learning. I'm. This is technically my third year. Um, I'll probably count next year as my third year too. But um, yeah, I've, I'm still learning so much every single week. And until I know what I'm doing out there, it's it's hard. Um, you know, last year I was trying to do a lot of drills that other girls were doing because they were successful. And you learn quickly that it doesn't matter what other girls are doing. You got to do what's best for you. So. Like I said, I'm learning every single day, and that's that's the most important thing. Yeah, you've been able to summon up some great rounds, though, during your career. You go back to winning uh, the state championship in Kentucky three times, really four, but, you know, who's counting? And uh, then you win <laughs> the, the U.S. Women's Amateur. I mean, that's a prestigious event right there. I mean, th- that's enough, but then you go to Alabama, and you win the NCAA championship. So, so how do you kind of summon up those great performances? I mean, when I look back, my dad always says you're not going to realize what you did until a lot later in life, and that's probably true because uh, it was all just a process, a big process. Uh, you practice hard, you work hard, you you have a good rhythm that week, and you win, and then you move on to the next week really fast. And so I'm very proud of my accomplishments, but there's so many more goals that I have, and I'm going to keep working hard and trying to get to achieve those goals. And You know, my time at Alabama was so good. I loved my coach. I loved the campus. I loved the friends I made. The success that the whole athletic community had at Alabama was just incredible and something you really can't get at every school. So I'm so thankful I went there. And, um, you know, you just have to, right now, even though I haven't won on the LPGA, um, you just have to be patient. I mean, some girls never went on the LPGA and they make millions of dollars. So you just got to be patient and hope for the best and hopefully you catch the right bounces and catch the right break week to week. From a financial standpoint, though, and that's kind of part of the professional tour, uh, are, do you go into a week hoping for a top 20 finish or a top 10, or are you just trying to play as well as you can that week? Yeah, I don't really think about that. Obviously, the goal um, is top 20 every week because that's so home cup points, um, and top 20s are great, but I don't go in thinking about money or where I want to finish. I'm thinking about each shot one at a time and just feeling really prepared each week going into the first round of the tournament. Um, Because it is 
sometimes you can get into a, a bad rhythm of just playing golf every single day and not realizing like, hey, today is a tournament round um, and really focusing. So for me, it's more about just making sure that I'm committed to each shot and feel prepared and, and that I can focus because sometimes I can get a little in la la way. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's difficult for anybody, even over the course of one round over 18 holes, it's tough to be committed to every shot, but uh, you're in a situation where every shot really means something. Yeah, for sure. I mean, every do- every shot does matter. I'll never forget. People often think in Princeton that my dad is the one that's hard on me, but I have to, I have to brag on my mom. I, my first top 10 on the LPGA my rookie year, I bogeyed the last hole because I, I kind of made a silly decision. I hit driver off the tee box when I'd been hitting three with the whole week, and I ran through into a bunker, made bogey. And she and I made a long putt for bogey, and she, when we were talking, she was like, I just want you to know you lost $40,000 on that bogey on the last oh. hole. <laughs> so she she was kidding, but at the same time, um, yeah, my, my mom and dad definitely um, make me laugh at, after each round, and I've been so lucky to have great parents and supportive parents. And um, a lot of people ask me, like, what's the difference? And I have to say they're very supportive and they, um, but they don't pressure me to do anything that I don't want to do. And they never have. I've just always loved the game and I want to be out there practicing. I'm just so lucky that they were willing and able to to follow me around growing up and, and kind of let me do whatever I needed to do to reach this goal. So I think that that's, it's been a huge part of my success for sure. Well, I remember following you one time when you were playing. I think you were in a bunker. And, and I said, well, she can get up and down for par from there. And your dad's like, we're not playing for pars. We're playing for birdies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for a long time I thought par, pars are a good thing. Pars are a good thing. And the the more you – play golf and the more the higher you know now i'm playing on the lpj versus pepsi tour you got to make some birdies so you're definitely always trying to give yourself the best opportunity knowing where to where to miss it and also knowing what side of the hole to be on so there's a lot more um thinking now than there used to be but that's what you got to do to to play with these girls well emma i appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, good luck whenever the tour gets going i do want to point out one thing though that uh uh, the sideline report has been on the air for about two years and eight months or so, and we've had a lot of different guests on during that time. But I think you're the only guest we've ever had that has your own Wikipedia page. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I do have a Wikipedia page. I'm not sure who made it. I actually know that some of the information on there is wrong, though. <laughs> so oh, someone no. needs to edit it. <laughs> But that, I thought that was really interesting that you had that. And, uh, again, uh, hopefully the LPGA Tour can get going next month and uh, you can get out there and win some money. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. And thank you for everyone, um, all Princeton folks that support me and also all the frontliners out there. I know there's a lot of people in, in need and that are hurting right now. So I'm um, praying and thinking about everyone in, in Princeton. All right. Thanks, Emma. And we got to come on and do it again sometime. Sounds good. Thanks, Todd. That's Emma Talley, LPGA Tour professional, former Caldwell County standout, former NCAA champion at the University of Alabama, and uh, now waiting for the LPGA Tour season to get underway. Right now they're hoping to start uh, toward the end of July in uh, Sylvania, Ohio, near Toledo. So uh, good luck to Emma Talley, and again, appreciate her being on the show this morning. Coming up, we got more, though. Caldwell County Youth Incorporated President Dwight Meeks is in the house and will be with us on the sideline report. Right now, though, we need to get to a break, and we'll be back with more after this on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Good morning. It's Beth Mann, President and CEO of the Edge Media Group. How can I begin to thank you for the terrific job you did showing your love and support of our local businesses during the greatest comeback give back last Friday? I knew that we served amazing communities. But just, wow, you really showed up when our businesses needed you the most. This week, we will start to see local businesses open in Trigg, Lyon, Caldwell, Christian, and Todd counties. We're excited to see our economy start to rebound. It will be so very important for us to support local by shopping in our local stores, eating in our local restaurants, and donating to our local nonprofits. We are blessed. And I'm asking you, if you're in a position to do so, please find ways to pay your blessings forward. 
Please be kind and be patient as our businesses adjust to a new norm. And please know that all that you are doing is much appreciated. You are making a difference in making this the greatest comeback of all time. And we thank you. During this trying time of the COVID-19 crisis, the Body Shop at Trice Hughes is open for business to help you with your repair needs. With the uncertainty that these times bring, Trice Hughes wants you to know they will help with your insurance deductible to get your vehicle repaired. Call for an appointment or free estimate at 270-365-5522. Working together with your home team at Trice Hughes will make sure you receive the service you deserve. Dr. Carl Hinton provides a variety of surgeries and scopes at the Trigg County Hospital Surgery Center. Dr. Hinton is well-known and loved in this area and provides years of experience in the following procedures. Appendectomy, colonoscopy, EGD, gallbladder, skin lesions, tubal ligation, and more. Dr. Hinton is available for clinic appointments Monday and Thursday, 1 to 5, and Fridays, 8 to noon. His office is located in Suite D of the Medical Arts Building next to Trigg County Hospital. Call 270-522-2557. Close to home, close to your heart. Toss a line, tie up, and come sit on the deck while you enjoy some of the best food around. Echo Charlie's at Eddy Creek Marina is officially reopening May 22nd. While for the time being the dining room will remain closed, curbside and dockside food and drink service will be available. Still want to enjoy the view? Have your takeout at one of their outdoor tables. Echo Charlie's. Fine food, good times, and a great view. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for menu options and the latest updates. We are back on the sideline report here on 1580 103.3 WPKY. Thanks for joining us this morning. And again, thanks to Emma Talley for joining us on the show. And in the studio now with us is Caldwell County Youth Incorporated President Dwight Meeks. And uh, uh, Dwight, tough act to follow. Well, uh, following Emma Talley, is she the warm up band for me or <laughs> what? You know, I've got an Emma story real fast, and I hope she's still listening. Uh, when I was playing golf, one day I was out there, and why she, she decided to play with me, I don't really know. But uh, we played a few holes, and uh, the uh, the hole that's right in front of the country club. 13. Uh, maybe. Yeah. And uh, I hit one. I think it almost hit the country club. <laughs> and then I hit another one, and it almost hit the country club. And, uh, you know, uh, I looked at her, and I said, Emma, can you help me out? And she said, Hey, since you've asked, yes. <laughs> and uh, I actually hit that one straight, you know, and because I know she said, we'll stay here until you do hit it straight. And I thought, you know, Jesus could come back before <laughs> that happens, you know. <laughs> so, but no, I actually I took some advice from her and hit it straight. And uh, I think the next hole was when we quit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I had a good time, and I appreciate the, the little time I got to spend with her. Well, I got to play with her and her dad a time or two, but... I quit playing when she could hit the ball farther than I could. I think she was 11. Well, I was fixing to say it, it had to be a uh, very early age. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, you know, just watching her golf game, though, she hits the ball so well. I mean, it's just – I mean, she would probably critique her game a little bit harsher than other people would, but she's like a machine out there hitting golf balls. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, very proud, very proud. The whole town's very proud of Emma. So, uh, you know, you can't just get an Emma Talley on your show every day. So no, I was, that's I was right. glad to have Emma on the show this morning. But glad to have you in as well. Thank you. You're Thank not you. making me weed eat today. So. Not today. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, y'all don't know this, uh, Todd, myself, we've been, and the other board members have been taking care of the uh, grounds out there at, uh, at the ballpark. Yesterday was a washout. Every time we got ready to do something, the rain came. The only thing that was positive yesterday was uh, Randy Jordan and his crew uh, got the electricity and the lights put in at the pavilion. And so that's something else that we can scratch off our bucket list that, that we've done for the ballpark. And very proud of that. Very proud of it. Oh, it looks nice. Uh, the lights on top of the, you know, in, inside mm -hmm. there, the pavilion where you can go in there now. And that's right. Uh, lots of electricity, you know. That's right. Charge up your phone, watch, right. watch your laptop, whatever yeah. you want to do. That's right. In the summer, plug up a fan if it's hot during the ball game. You know, <laughs> we've got some other stuff to do, but uh, to that, but uh, yeah, it's a you know, it's another step, another step. Looks like we are going to get to have a summer season for baseball, softball, and t-ball. Uh, exactly how that's going to look, 
Nobody mm. knows exactly right now, but uh, we do know from signups last Saturday that a lot of people are ready to get out of the house oh. and get out to the ballpark. Todd, last Saturday, uh, Misty put in there, you know, rain or shine, and we had the we had the sunshine. Yeah, but then the rain came. And you thought, well, we're done. We're done. But we had probably about 10 or 11 people come during the pouring down rain. Yeah. And the board, and, uh, and uh, listen, hats off to our board who were there uh, to help any which way they could. And uh, we got, well, Todd, I think it was over 60 kids yeah, signed up over 60. that day. Yeah. And now uh, I've had about 10 to sign up since then. And now tomorrow morning will be the end of our, our sign up. So if you're wanting to sign up, uh, I know Todd's given my number over the radio, but it's 270-625-3114. Now, don't call me right now. I'm on the radio. But <laughs> after I get off the radio, uh, call me if you want your kid to play. So sign up still available, but you got you got to get on it pretty quick. Yes, yes, yeah, because we plan on picking teams Sunday. Uh, we got to go through some stuff Saturday, you know, to put them in the order and stuff like that. And uh Misty Porter's taking care of that, and she's doing a great job. Her first year, and uh, what a wild first year she's gotten, you know. Well, Misty was on the show last week, and one of the things we talked about was how people are going to have to be really patient this season when, mm. when we finally do get out to the ballpark because there are going to be a lot of things different, and there's not anything anybody can do about it. It's just the way it is. Yeah, Todd, when you come to the ballpark, if we, if we tell you there's something going on different, you shouldn't be surprised. Nobody should be surprised at anything that's going on right now. Uh, you know, and if we have one head coach, that head coach is going to have to have a lot of coaches. Right. So we need a lot of parents to step up this year, uh, expe- especially this year, to help out because the dugout situation, we're probably going to have to sit outside with the kids. And, you know, kids are kids. Mm-hmm. You know, grown-ups are grown-ups, and we're getting close to each other. So you know what the kids are going to do. So uh, we're going to have to have coaches to sit out there, keep, try to keep them six foot apart, uh, no high-fiving and stuff like that, you know. So uh, when your child, uh, when the coach does call and tell you what team you're on, uh, put in a good word to your coach that, hey, I can help. I, you know, I can do something. So and we sure would appreciate that. Yeah, the social distancing thing will be – Difficult, not just for the ball players, like you mentioned. Parents, people coming out to the ballpark are going to maybe have to bring their own lawn chairs or something to sit in and and try to space out best you can. Yeah, you know, Todd. Now we still haven't, like you said, we still haven't got the guidelines, but some stuff they're throwing out is uh, no bleachers. You know, so we're going to rope our bleachers off. So yes, bring you'll have to bring your chair and uh, sit away from each other. You know, uh, the bathroom may have to leave an attendant at the bathroom. Uh, one child goes in, you know, then we have to clean that bathroom. Concession stand, still only up up in the air about that. So still a lot of questions. Not a whole lot of answers right yet, but a lot of questions, okay? Talking this morning with uh, Dwight Meeks, Caldwell County Youth Incorporated president. Need to get to a break here on the show, though, but we'll be back with more right after this on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Cue the pomp and circumstance as Coldwell County celebrates their graduates in style. Don't miss one second Friday, May 22nd, as our very own Coldwell County Class of 2020 become Tiger alumni. Listen live on 1580-103.3 WPKY as the Coldwell County Class of 2020 playlist plays live on the air during the Parade of Seniors and watch live on WPKY Online and on Facebook Live as Todd Griffin and I give you the play-by-play starting at 5.30 as we travel and follow their ride to the podium at the Caldwell County High School where we will all watch together as they accept their diplomas. Then settle in and watch our Caldwell County graduation in its entirety on WPKYOnline.com. Don't miss a minute of this historic graduation from WPKYOnline.com and 1580-103.3 W. WPKY. At ABC Finance, we have always been committed to keeping our customers and our staff safe and healthy. In response to the recent COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, we've implemented several new policies company-wide to ensure the safety and well-being of all. This includes limiting access to parts of our office to the public, isolating loan closings to one area, and frequently sanitizing all hard, frequently touched surfaces. We've also asked our staff to please stay home in the event they are feeling unwell. 
If you, as a customer, are unwell or are uncomfortable with getting out of the house, stay home. And please remember, payments can be made by phone or online at abcfinanceonline.com. You can also apply for a loan on our website with fast decisions and quick turnaround time. If you have any additional questions, please contact the office nearest you. Locations are listed on our website, abcfinanceonline.com. Also, follow us on Facebook for the latest information. And stay safe from all of us at ABC Finance. This is the Sideline Report on 1580, 103.3 WPKY and WPKYonline.com. Thanks for joining us this morning. Talking right now with Caldwell County Youth Incorporated President Dwight Meeks. And uh, Dwight, we were talking earlier, the ballpark uh, right now looks as good as it's ever looked. But part of that reason is there hasn't been any traffic on it. And that's not really something we'd like. And it does, you know... uh Normally by now we would have some more out spots on our fields and everything is just as green as can be and uh, it, it really looks nice but I'd rather see those wore out places right, right now you know <laughs> yeah, you'd rather see people on all those fields playing yes. ball but uh, that's another thing we talked about even last week is that you probably won't go to the ballpark this summer and ever see every field lit up with games on it you're just going to see a couple of fields again as we try to. Uh, spread people out and uh, mm-hmm. social distance. Yeah, Todd, you know, we, we hit on that the other night at the board meeting. Uh, we're going to try to keep those teams that are playing away from each other as much as possible. Uh, there's no way we could fire every field up. Well, we got four fields out there, yeah. Todd, we could fire up. and Five, uh, if you count five, the big field. That's yeah. right, yeah, five fields. And, well, you talk about some people there. And and just but, but, but that's the special thing about the ballpark in the summer, though, is when you go out there and they're just – Oh, people everywhere, and there's a line at the concession stand, yeah. and every ball field is has people yelling, and yeah, yeah. But we can't do that this year. No, and uh, like I say, it's going to be a different year. It's going to we'll never forget it. We know that. Hopefully, things will be back to mm-hmm. normal next year, and uh, we can have those wore out places yeah. already. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> a little more field maintenance, but things have really been. You know, it's uh, not really having to work on the field. It's just uh, mowing and weed eating. And uh, like I said, you you, me and the others on the board, we've got plenty of that right now. And uh, I w- would like to say thank you to the board. Uh, uh, we've laid our help off uh, right now because of the, the virus. And so the board members have stepped up and uh, taken care of the field and other issues. And uh, hats off to every one of the board members. And Todd is one of those board members. I don't know if everybody knows that. (laughs) Well, we were talking with Emma earlier, and she was talking about uh, the unknown with the coronavirus thing that, you know, you try to make plans, but nobody really knows exactly how things are going to play out. Yeah, you know, Misty's hit on this, that uh, we could get everything ready to go, and we could have a hiccup and have to do something else. So bear with us. We can tell you all the rules, and those rules could change in an hour. So hang in, hang in there with us. Once again, though, you can still sign up if you haven't already signed up. Uh, Dwight, just once again, tell us uh, how to go about getting signed okay. up for the season. Uh, just call me again at 270-625-3114, and I've got the applications. We'll have you fill the application out, uh, give us your money, and we'll be picking teams Sunday. Now, I do want to uh, stress to, to the parents that once we uh, sign up and once we've ordered those shirts, there will be no refunds. And I think that's only fair, uh, you know, because we, we're doing everything we can. And if somebody changes the rules down the road, that's not our fault. So, uh, but not until then. Now, we'll give a refund if, if you want to back out right now. But after we've ordered your shirt... You'll get the shirt, and there's there's no refunds. Well, and a couple of parents have expressed some concerns, and uh, I know a lot of parents, well, I guess all of them have to at some point determine, uh, do I want my youngster to go play, or do I need to err on the side of caution? Mm-hmm. And uh, from what we've seen in sign up so far, most people are, are willing to get out and, and go ahead and try to play this summer. And, you know, that's the reason why we need all those parents to help coach this year. We, we'll have a head coach make a lineup out. But I think the the the, the uh, 
the blunt of all the coaching is going to be those extra parents out there helping us. That's where the real work's going to be. Making a lineup's nothing, but keeping those kids away and trying to do the right thing. Uh, and that's what we are going to do. We're going to have the hand sanitizer. We're going to have this and that out there. We're going to do everything uh, possible to make everything safe for the kids. That's for sure. And for the parents and the coaches and stuff. Like I said earlier, everybody just has to be patient this year, though, because none of us have been here before. No, no, and hopefully we'll never be back, you know. Yeah, so. Amen to that. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I'm like a lot of people. I don't want anybody to to have anything from this coronavirus. I wish it would just go away. But uh, at the same time, I'd kind of like to kind of at least start getting back to something yeah. normal again. Yeah, yeah. And apparently with the sign-ups that we had, a lot of people are ready to try to do that, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, bear with us and and pray for us, and uh, hopefully, we'll uh, uh, the season will uh, will have no problems at all. Again, though, the ballpark really looking nice right now. Uh, some work has been done. The softball team did a lot of work on that field over there. Uh, oh, that thing looks good. Oliver Park has had some work done to it, did that. and uh, uh, the the Tilly field, the, the field in the back. Work on that is coming at it some point. It is coming. Yeah. We've got the dirt. Uh, you know, we were going to start construction on that, well, just any day. And uh, now since we're going to play ball, we're kind of holding up on that right now and to see uh, what fields we're going to play on and stuff. But uh, next year, the Tilly field will be redone. Mm. And then that means all of our fields, every one of them, have uh, we've done something to them to make them safer for your children and uh the play the play uh you know a lot of those infields uh the oliver field when when we drag it i've hit, uh, got jace out there as a guinea pig and trying to hit him some shots <laughs> and you know and the ball rose pretty smooth out there oh, good and of course the uh settle field man we've got it, that it looks nice looking good yeah yeah, yeah. It, it really is nice so uh bear with us on the tilly field next year it'll look uh, uh, a little different and uh, looking forward to the, just the changes that we make and we're making changes all the time out there all the time well it looks like a different ballpark in some ways uh, if you go out there and look around just the improvements and and you can go back to even when they put the brick around the vfw ballpark and uh, you know it hasn't been long since they put the big blue fence around it and that looks great and uh <laughs> You know, a, a lot less wires out oh, at the ballpark now. Yeah, it all looks yeah. nice. You know, the electric plant board jumped in there, and I know we've talked about this before, but the electric plant board jumped in there on that project along with Randy Jordan Electric, and uh, just uh, took all of our primary wire. We put it underground. Uh, we've got n new light poles out there, some new lights, and we're still uh, still working on that. Still going to set some more poles and lights. Uh, we're pretty proud of it pretty doggone proud of it and uh uh you know it's it's that ballpark has just kind of a uh i don't know uh like a little hometown ballpark that you come to you know it's, it doesn't have all the concrete around it that you you know you're walking on grass <laughs> mostly you know a lot of these new ballparks now you walk on concrete everywhere yeah. and uh this this little ballpark doesn't so uh, but we're going to try to, even though it's a little hometown ballpark, we're going to try to make it as uh, nice and uh, uh, safe and playable for everybody. Well, we do have a question from a listener this morning, and uh, they want to know who the best pool volleyball player you know is, and why is that person Aaron McClung? <laughs> well, Aaron would have to toot his own horn. <laughs> Uh, I have played a lot of uh, pool volleyball with Aaron, and I've seen him go back. He looks like a uh, beach whale <laughs> falling in the water. <laughs> uh, maybe we need to get a league up again, Aaron, and, and do that. <laughs> I'm glad I could get that question out, though, before, before the show was over. Just once again, though, it does look like we're going to play this summer at the ballpark, at the Ratliff Park Complex, and uh, we're kind of excited about that. But, again, just everybody – uh, please be extra patient this year, and let's just uh, yeah. see how things go. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, we're uh, we're not really even supposed to practice to June the fifteenth. Mm. So, uh, you're after we pick the teams, the coaches will call you, your boy or girl, and they're going to ask for the shirt sizes again to make sure we're on, 
you know, make sure we got the right shirt size. They'll ask for a number. Uh, then they will also give you the practice date. Okay, and we may have two practices. And, and I'm glad we're having the practice, too, because that will give that coach some uh, way of knowing how he's going to handle his team. How am I going to spread my kids out? You know, what am I going to do here? Well, so those practices are not just practice baseball and softball. That is to actually – Some well, social distance kids. Yes, practicing, yes. That's right. That's right. So uh, it would be hard to say we'd ever do that, a social distance practice. And then after that, um, then a- after he does that, you'll have your practices. And we're plan on starting uh, around, after July the 4th, start playing. Okay. And how many games we've got lined up, don't really know that schedule. Okay. This is the Sideline Report on 1580-103.3 WPKY Princeton, Kentucky. Thanks for joining us this morning. A big thanks to Emma Talley for being on the show, and a big thanks to Dwight Meeks for joining us. And, Dwight, anything else you want to add about uh, Youth Incorporated before we wrap it up? No, listen, you know, uh, like I said, just bear with us this year. Like like you've said, Todd, and everybody else said, it's different, mm-hmm. and it's going to be different this year. So uh, uh, bear with us, hang in there with us, and uh, hopefully we'll come through it. Yeah, we, we wish we could tell everybody exactly how the season's oh, yes. going to go, but again, there's no way. Yeah. No. Just have to get into it and, and see yeah. where we get. That's right. Well, thanks again for coming in. Yes. and uh, thank you. We'll get back to weed eating one of these days. Uh, I'm sure we will, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap us up on the show today. Thanks for joining us here on the Sideline Report here on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Serving Caldwell County since 1950, we're 1580-103.3 WPKY Princeton. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. The weekly unemployment number, another 2.4 million new claims. White House Economic Advisor Larry Kudlow tells Fox. You're actually seeing small signs of an improving economy, small signs to be